Welcome to Sleepy Eyes. I am your host, Varga. I take you on a journey in the dark of the night with warm tales. Take a moment to relax your body and mind with the current calmness. Breathe deeply, feel the energy inside, and let go of any tiredness. Put aside the past and focus on the peacefulness of the present moment. Recognize any tension in your body. Allow it to fade away and unwind. Discover your inner peace and simply unwind in the tranquility of now. Before going to sleep, prepare to read a story comfortably in this peaceful setting. Let the magic of words captivate you as you get lost in a tale or story. With the warmth from this peace and relaxation, your sleep will become even more serene. Close your eyes, embark on a journey with a touch of words. Let each word guide you a bit deeper toward the essence of your inner peace. Now, relax and enjoy the pleasure of getting lost in the enchanting world of the story before drifting into sleep. Of Dust and Domes Chapter 1 A Harvest Lost Jake rubbed the sleep from his eyes as creaking noises echoed through the greenhouse dome. Massive gusts howled outside, rocking the structural beams that capped over the delicate plants with plasteel shells. It was happening again. Another planetary-scale dust storm was bearing down on the colony. Throwing off his sheets, Jake rushed to throw on his insulated work clothes. The colonists had forecast this storm, but its ferocity still took him by surprise. As head greenhouse keeper, it was his responsibility to check all life support systems and secure any vulnerable growths before conditions deteriorated further. Stepping into his boots, Jake hustled out into the main bay. Through the dim emergency lighting, he could see the dome flexing violently under the onslaught. Colonists scrambled everywhere to reinforce structural points. Jake, the north quadrant beam is about to buckle, called Clara over the comms. Get there now before we lose the crops. Wasting no time, Jake swung into action. Pulling out his toolkit, he went to work clamping support struts to the massive beam as it waved back and forth threatening to snap, all while sand battered the dome above and whipped across the enclosed growth beds. It was a race against time as the howling winds grew to a deafening crescendo. If they didn't act fast, this storm could destroy months of work and endanger the entire colony's limited supplies. As the winds intensified, Jake hurried from beam to beam, inspecting for fractures in the plasteel shells. Cracks had already begun snaking across several panes, thin tendrils racing towards larger breaches. He frantically layered on sealant and reinforcement, working until his hands went numb. Despite his best efforts, the howling gales continued pushing the dome to its structural limits. Glancing up, Jake glimpsed a deep ochre sky nearly black with angry swirling clouds of dust and sediment. The light filtering through was dimming by the minute as the storm enveloped the entire horizon. If they didn't finish repairs soon, they risked being left in complete darkness, with only the dome's backup floods to rely on. He radioed the command center for status updates, but the whining static hinted at dwindling communication ability. The colonists persevered through the worsening conditions, yet... Jake saw the fatigue setting into his crewmates' expressions by the sluggishness of their movements, and still, the storm raged on without reprieve. Jake doubted the dome's ability to withstand these ferocious winds much longer. They had to shore up defenses before the howling tempest succeeded in tearing apart all their efforts and threatening far more than just their crops. Dust swirling into the greenhouse through numerous cracks, had reduced visibility to just a few meters. Jake coughed as he pressed new sealant strips around the largest fissure, but the howling winds peeled back his efforts before they could fully cure. 
through stinging eyes, he saw colonists desperately battling to bolster struts and beams with whatever materials could be found. Without warning, another thunderous crack splintered the plasteel above Jake. He stumbled back, peering up in horror as a massive sliver tore away from the dome. Sandy debris avalanched downward in a raging torrent. Brace for impact, he screamed into his calm bead. Jake threw his body over the fissure to anchor the sealant beneath his weight. Pelting grains bombarded his back as several colonists scrambled to unload cargo nets overhead. Tools and supplies rained down, along with an onslaught of dust. Jake grit his teeth and locked his muscles against the roar of the storm. After an eternity, the barrage lessened. Coughing, Jake rolled off the breach to find it had reopened under the assault. Their protective oasis had been breached, transforming within moments into a howling sandy maelstrom. Through stinging eyes, Jake glimpsed the true scope of damage for the first time. Across the dome, once solid plasteel shells now wavered and bowed under the force of planetary winds. Their buffer against the outside was no more. Jake staggered through the sand-blasted greenhouse as Clara's voice cracked through the static on his calm bead. Jake, status report. We just lost the North Dome. Can your structures hold? She sounded desperate as another groan rumbled through the plasteel shells. Shielding his face with an arm, Jake peered skyward and felt his heart sink. Wind-borne grit scoured his exposed skin like shards of crushed glass. Directly above the largest fissure, a thick reinforcement beam quivered under the mounting strain. As he watched, a sudden savage gust kicked up a new wail from the metal innards. With agonizing sluggishness, the beam began to bow outward. Clara, the South Dome is compromised. We're losing integrity. Get everyone to the... Jake's urgent warning chopped to silence as with a bone-shuddering crack, the beam finally split. In the span of a shocked heartbeat, it peeled away from its anchors and crashed downward amid a billowing eruption of debris. Colonists screamed and scattered from the impact zone, but wind had whipped the dust into an opaque shroud. Jake lost sight of his crew through the blinding sand swarm. Coughing and bewildered, he reached again for his calm, then froze in dread. Above the chaos, he now heard a deeper, resonating groan as the entire dome canopy began to buckle under the unopposed onslaught of Mars' fury. With an ear-splitting crack, the dome gave way. Jake threw his arms over his head as the thunderous collapse unleashed a hellstorm of shrapnel, broadcasting their once sheltered environment to the merciless elements. Through the chaos, he witnessed hanging tendrils unfurling into the wind. Months of cultivation were ravaged in seconds, the remnants of their harvest scattered into the bruising sands, where sheltering shells once stood tall now loomed only jagged remnants, spearing uselessly at the dust-choked twilight. Jake huddled low against the howl, choking on the blizzard billowing through the shattered skeleton of Greenhouse Six. Above the wail of torn metal, he cried out desperately for any response from his crew through the static-laced comms. No replies came but the lonely song of the gale. As fragments settled, the full scope emerged through the fading sandstorm. Row upon row of crops lay flattened, abandoned to the elements that had so long been kept at bay. All around sprawled the ruins of their protective domes, a crumbled graveyard where once life had thrived. Gone was the promise of sustenance. In its place reigned only barren scraps and desolation beneath the fading ochre sky. They had lost it all. Now, in the eye of the dust storm's fury, the fate of the colony itself hang precarious as ever in the balance of the red planet's wrath. Coughing, Jake opened his eyes to swirling ochre gloom. The howling winds had dissipated, leaving an eerie stillness in their wake. 
Slowly, he heaved himself up from the gritty soil and peered around at the dim silhouette of landscape, now utterly transformed. All around lay the toppled remains of their greenhouse, crenellated, plasteel jutted like bleached bone amid the carnage of snapped beams and twisted metal. Through the murk, not a single biofilter dome or growth bed remained intact. Their subterranean oasis had been scoured back to the raw red regolith once more. Choking back despair, Jake activated his comm beacon and began stumbling through the dust drifts. Clara, colony status, please respond. Static hissed back at him until, faintly, he heard her weary voice. Jake, thank God, Greenhouse 6, lost them all, get to command, we need a plan. Jake plowed onward through the graveyard of their former bounty, all around, the crops they had nurtured for months with such care lay battered and broken, yet beyond the ruins an even greater threat loomed, without sustenance, the delicate colony itself would not survive long on the earthen domes. Emerging at last at the command habitat, Jake raced to Clara's side, hoping, against hope she had answers to the crisis now facing them all on the hostile Red Plains. Clara met Jake at the airlock, pulling him into a grateful hug upon seeing he had emerged from the wreckage unscathed. But as they parted, her worried expression said it all. Through the porthole, they surveyed the bleak panorama left in the storm's wake. No shadows of sheltering shells rose above the piles of debris. The crops they had spent years cultivating were battered ruins among the dust drifts, buried beneath leagues of sediment scoured from the rust-hued terrain. It was a landscape altered beyond immediate recognition from what had existed only hours before. With greenhouses six and seven total losses, We've lost over half our food reserves, already stockpiled for the coming year, Clara said grimly, and I don't think we have time to restart growth before stores run critically low. Jake ran desperate calculations in his head. At current consumption with limited rations, their dwindling supplies wouldn't sustain the colony more than a few months at most. After that, with no protection from the harsh environment, and no means to become self-reliant again. He met Clara's weary gaze with grim understanding. Unless they found an answer, and fast, they would be facing nothing short of an existential crisis on the hostile plains of Mars. The colony's very future hung by a thinning thread, and their window to remedy the crisis was closing swiftly.